Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Are You Ready here on YouTube. I pray you're having a very blessed evening in the Lord. Jesus loves you. He's coming back real, real soon. Are you ready for the return of Christ? Are you? Are you expecting his return? I am. I hope you are. Jesus said in Matthew 25, verse 13, Watch therefore, for you do not know the day nor the hour at which the Son of Man will come. We don't know. We don't know the day nor the hour when he will return. But you have to be alert. You got to be expecting. Are you expecting the return of Christ? Well, let's drink our water from the Artesian well here in Augusta, Georgia. Salud. Mm. Great water. I pray you're having a great one. We have something very important to do today. Talk about here's the wheel. We cover everything here on Are You Ready? <laughs> Tonight we're going to cover something called UFOs 2021. Yes, somebody said bringing out the tin foil. But, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is something uh, that is a setup for the future. Yes, it is. Believe it or not. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We praise you. We adore you. You are Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Sikhanu, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi. You are the creator of the universe. We thank you. Te damos gracias y por tu misericordia y por tu ayuda. Thank you for your grace and your love. Holy Spirit, direct everything I say. Let it be for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Once again, thank you for joining us here on Are You Ready on YouTube. All right, here we go. I got my NASA hat. How about that, huh? Okay, here we go. UFOs 2021. Have you ever seen any of those old movies? I have. <laughs> I used to, as a kid, used to watch all those old movies back in uh, New Jersey, I know, in uh, ABC New York, and there was um, WPIX, and I mean, it, it, there was uh, New York uh, TV stations, and every weekend uh, on Saturdays we we had, there was like the science fiction or the mystery time on a certain station. We watched the old fifties movies, you know, Frankenstein, the werewolf, that kind of thing, and then we also watched movies about space and aliens landing, uh, that kind of thing, <laughs> you know. I guess I always had some interest in science fiction when I was a kid. Um, but now, those things that I think was the science fiction was not really real. Guess what the Pentagon did? Have you ever seen a green light? You're going down the road and you, know, you have the red light, green light, yellow light. Well, the Pentagon has turned on the green light. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. The Pentagon has turned on the green light. He said, what are you talking about? Well, the Pentagon did a report. Yes, they did. They, they did uh, an investigation of 143, 144 UFO cases. Of course, they don't call them that any, anymore. They call them something else. Uh, and so they, they, and this is what they finally, I'm just going to give you the beginning. This is what they finally came out with just a few days ago. This is what the Pentagon said. These uh, 143 cases that they investigated, it said it defied any sort, sort of earthly explanation not connected to any military on this earth. Talk about green light, green light, green light. <laughs> there you go. The Pentagon report, the government still has no explanations for nearly all the scores of unidentified aerial phenomena. 143 out of 144 cannot be explained. The report said the objects may, uh, uh, without, uh, among, without uh, observable propulsion or with rapid acceleration that is believed to be beyond the capabilities of Russia, China, or other terrestrial nations. They said, 
Ladies and gentlemen, this cannot be done on this planet. Well, they just opened the door. Now, everybody said, everybody who believes in UFOs is that, did you hear what the Pentagon said? It says, it didn't come from here. Oh, there you go. It came from somewhere else. Mm. It is a nine-page document, largely inconclusive. Too little data to draw a conclusion about many many of the episodes, officials said. On Friday, they did not want to admit it may be extraterrestrial crafts. Mm. The UFO 2021. Uh, among the unexplained incidents on three high-profile videos of aerial phenomena taken by the U.S. Navy, this is an interim report. In another 90 days, they're going to be bringing another report to the Congress about the same thing, a UFO. They're going to be continuing to investigate. Five categories of possible explanations to the phenomena. Number one, it was a secret technology developed by Russia and China. That's a possibility. Number two, classified American technology. Number three, naturally occurring phenomena. Number four, airborne clutter. And number five, extraterrestrial technology. E.T., want to go home? E.T., go home. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, the Pentagon plans to seek help from scientists. You know, it reminds me. <laughs> you know, there was a movie. I think there was a movie where they did that. They brought a scientist. I don't know if it was Independence Day or some other movie where they brought all these scientists. Even in the 1950s, they were saying, let's bring these, bring them well-known scientists to figure this out. What is this? Where did it come from? Where does it come from? So they listen. They, they, this is this is not a joke. I'm not making it up. This is not Independence Day. This is not when the world stood still. This is the Pentagon 2021 again. Pentagon 2021 said the Pentagon plans to seek help from scientists and experts who in the past have avoided talking about UFOs, can join the team. Is it for real? So, in other words, they're, get, they're looking for scientists around the world to join a team of scientists to investigate. Are there, are there UFOs? Where do they come from? Hmm. What are UFOs? Unidentified flying objects. And I and I think they call it they don't want to call it unidentified unidentified aerial phenomena. That's what they're calling it now. UAP. Unidentified aerial phenomena instead of UFO. Because they, what happens <laughs> the Pentagon says the UFOs has had a bad we don't want to be connected to that. Because it, it says if we start saying UFO, then they're going to think we're going to have we wearing that tin foil on our head, and you know that stuff. They're going to be calling us crazy. Well, no, no, wait, wait. We're talking about this, but we're not like those people over there. We're not like that. Those nuts out there, crazy people waiting for, you know, waiting for the ship to land. Like we're not like them, so we're not going to call them UFOs. We're going to call them. Uh, unidentified aerial phenomena, UAV. Okay, unidentified flying object is an aerial phenomena that cannot be immediately identified or explained. Most UFOs are unidentified or investigated as conventional, un, uh, conventional objects. You know, something that just happened. It's no real. Now, a little history of the UFOs in the United States. The first well-known UFO sighting occurred in 1947 when a businessman, Kenneth Arnold, claimed to see a group of nine high-speed objects near Mount Rainier here in the U.S. He said the speed of the objects was a thousand of miles per hour. 
And then we have Project Blue Book, ladies and gentlemen. I, when I was in high school, I did a book report, or a, uh, I don't know if it's a term paper or a book report on UFOs. And I started investigating, doing research on UFOs. The History of UFOs, Project Blue Book, and I remember that. Many of the best-known claims uh, came from Project Blue Book, Blue Book, U.S. government program, which existed from 1948 to 1969. During that time, they looked at 12,618 sightings of UFOs, or as they say today, unidentified aerial phenomena. 701 of them they could not be identified. I repeat, 700, 701 could not be identified. Ladies and gentlemen, we are living in the last days. We're living in the last days. Uh, now, what, what are these things? Okay, these things that are being seen all over the place. And like I said, when I was a kid, that... That when I, I mean, we're talking about 40, 40, I'm, I'm 60. And when I was a teenager uh, back in the 70s, that was big. It was People were talking about it all the time. And movies were made. Remember uh, E.T., uh, then Close Encounters of the, of the Third Kind. Uh, and all these uh, movies began to happen. And a lot of these, uh, you know, again... Because it goes in waves. One moment people have a great interest in it and they don't. And then it goes up and down, up and down, up and down. I guess we're up again. Uh, but now the government has given them, those who believe, what could happen in the future. It is a setup for the Antichrist, ladies and gentlemen. When the rapture happens, ladies and gentlemen, let me read you here. Let's go to Luke. Luke chapter 21. Let's quickly go to Luke and we're going to pray. Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. Let's go to Luke chapter 21. Luke 21 verse 25. Now listen to this. Luke 21 verse 25 says, And there will be signs in the sun and in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Now, what I want to look at, first of all, let's look at this. This says there are going to be signs. On these signs, people seeing these things in the sky. Same my own, which is miracle, mark, or a, a token, I dig, in the, or an indication of something happening. An unusual occurrence. I repeat, the word seem may, my own means unusual occurrence. What are we talking about? These things are called unusual occurrences. Then Jesus said that it will be, this is Jesus Christ, that there will be what? Distress of nations. Well, the, I don't know if there is distress in America, maybe in other parts of the world. And Stan Oak Rea. And I think that's going to be a gr an interesting setup for the Antichrist in the last days. When the rapture happens. Cuando ocurre el arrebatamiento y toda la gente desaparezca. That's what I just said in Spanish. When the rapture happens and everybody disappears. People are going to say, where did the people go? Where did they go? Oh, that's it. Remember when the Pentagon said, those people are real. The, the, the aliens took them. The aliens took them. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a possibility. Now the word uh, perplexity is the Greek word aporia. Aporia means anxiety. There will be anxiety on the earth. Now, I explained what the, word, the Lord said, Jesus said, that in the last days there are going to be unusual occurrences. That is an unusual occurrence. Now, what are these things? Are they really aliens from another planet? Or is it possible, is it possible that these things are fallen angels? Hmm, what do you think? What if they're fallen angels? These are fallen angels. All right, let's go to the Word of God. 
Let's continue. We're going to feel, read a few verses. Jude chapter 1, there's only one chapter, verse 6 says, And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Again, could these be fallen angels? Let's go to Second Peter chapter 2. Some Bible scholars think they could be. Some others think no way, no how. Okay, so Second Peter chapter 2 verse 4. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment, and did not spare the ancient world, okay, but, but save Noah. But the, the part I want you to look at, for God did not spare the angels who sinned. Again, those were fallen angels, which were thrown out of the third heaven, okay? Could these be fallen angels masquerading lying and deceiving people on the earth i believe so i believe that these are fallen angels revelation chapter 12 verse 9 let's go to revelation chapter 12 verse 9 okay revelation 12 verse 9 says so the great dragon was cast out the serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world. He was cast out of the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Once again, I believe that these are fallen angels that are going to deceive many people on earth. Estos son ángeles que han caído, que van a, a, eh, van a Engañar a muchas de las personas aquí en la tierra. So, the word reserved here in 2 Peter 2, 4 is the Greek word tereo, which means to carefully take care or to observe. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the last days. These things are going to occur more and more because the day of the return of Jesus Christ is near. It is near. UFO sightings are going to increase. The Pentagon don't know what they are. But these, this, this is going to increase as the day comes for the return of Christ. Do you know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord? God, the Father, sent His Son to die for you on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. Why? Because you and I were born in sin. Sin separates us from a relationship with God the Father. So God sent His Son. God sent his son, his only son, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So God sent his son to die for you on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. And on the third day, he rose again. Right? In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. What would you have to do? Well, if you want to be, be changed, you can't do it on your own. You need a redeemer. He paid the penalty and he asked you to receive him into your heart. Accept Christ as your Savior and as your Lord. And what happens when you do that? Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and you're going to be with him forever and ever. But he'll give you strength while you're here. Jesus said in John 16, 33, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. He overcame the world. Jesus Christ overcame the world. Hallelujah. And he's saying, come home. Come home. Come unto Jesus. Come unto you. Let him into your heart. He's knocking. Can you hear the door knock? He's knocking at the door of your heart. Let him in. Let him in. Let him be the Lord of your life. He'll make you a new creature. And you write your name in the book of life. The first thing you need to do is repent. Repent. That was what Jesus' message was. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Begin today. Don't wait till tomorrow. Pray with me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I repent of all my sins. I receive you as my Savior, as my Lord. 
Wash me in your precious blood. And from this moment on, I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, I pray for every single person to say yes to you. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Give them a hunger for your word and connect them to a church where they can be discipled. In Jesus' name, amen. If you gave your life to Christ, welcome to the family of God. The angels in heaven are rejoicing. That's a great party in heaven. And please read the greatest book you could ever read the Bible. Read the Gospel of John. Fall in love with Jesus. Well, thank you for joining us here on Are You Ready? Here on YouTube. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Click notification and share this video with as many people as possible. And remember, Shalu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem and tell your, your children, encourage your children to live for Jesus. That's what I do in mine. We're living for Jesus. Serving Christ. And I think my son wrote something right back here. He said, Jesus loves you so much. That's what he bought on, on the board back there. Jesus loves you. He loves you. And live for him. Don't look back. Look forward. Look forward. Forgetting what lies behind. Looking forward to what lies ahead. Live for Jesus, everybody. Shalom.